Our next historic speecher, speaker is Jahan Arashanawas, born in 1896 and became influential in the Muslim communities in India and Pakistan, where she advocated for women's rights. During her political career, she broke many barriers by becoming the first woman to serve in leadership roles in a range of key organizations, including becoming one of the first two women who were eventually elected to serve in the Pakistan Constituent Assembly and Central Legislature. In 1935, she formed the Punjab Provincial Muslim Women's League. A decade later, she played a central role in the civil disobedience movement in Punjab, and was arrested with other members of the Muslim Women's League. In 1954, as a legislator, she introduced the Charter of Women's Rights, during which she argued that rights granted to women in Islam could not be denied to women in an Islamic state. Here to recreate her speech before the legislator is Kavita Bhandari. Also from India, Ms. Bhandari is a junior at Smith College, where she is pursuing a double major in English and Psychology. She is passionate about acting and has performed in plays both throughout her school life and during her time at Smith. She is excited to be a part of this wonderful project and says she considers herself lucky to have been given the opportunity to read the speech of Jahan Arashanawas, a brilliant and strong woman. I present to you Kavita Bhandari. The final meeting of the Constituent Assembly took place just the day before we left for China. Jubilant speeches were delivered and the Charter of Women's Rights, with 3% reservation of seats for women, both in the Central and Provincial Assemblies, was passed unanimously by the House. I had asked for a Charter of Women's Rights to include equality of status, equal opportunities, equal pay for equal work. For Muslim women, all the rights given to them by the Islamic personal law of Sharia. Just before the meeting, I met with members of the assembly belonging to the minority communities and the young Muslim members of the committee, and I discussed the charter with them. I said that adult suffrage had been accepted, and they had better be careful in voting for the rights of women, which were being discussed by the committee the next day. For women would surely come to know who had advocated their cause and who had opposed it. I told them also that the charter framed by me had the backing of all the women's organizations in the country. The next day, when I spoke about it in the committee, the president says to me, Begum Sahiba, Islam recognizes equality in civic rights and we gladly concede the rights given by religion to our women. But for an infant state like Pakistan, it is not possible to incorporate the rights asked for as justifiable fundamental rights. I pointed out, if Islam had given such rights, they could not be denied to the women citizens of an Islamic state. Was there any difference in the Quran between jaza and saza? Even for the worst crime that a married man or a married woman could commit, both were to be put to death. The similarity in provisions for reward, punishment and other provisions of different types, the words used were for both men and women. Sir Zafarullah said that even in Great Britain, Prime Minister Winston Churchill had refused to accept a bill for equal pay for equal work and had asked for a vote of confidence from the House. I replied that as far as Great Britain was concerned, it had been one of the most conservative states with regard to the right of equality for women citizens. And many of the rights accepted by so many other progressive countries were still denied to British women. Therefore, the citing of that example was no argument at all. After my speech, each one of the minority members spoke in support of me. Then the Muslim members went on in the same strain, one after another. When it came to Sardar Bahadur Khan's turn, he supported the full charter for women's rights. Sardar Abdur Rab Nishtar exclaimed, even you are supporting it. Sardar Bahadur let the cat out of the bag by saying that in the future, they had to face an equal number of women's electorate and therefore he had to support it. The result was that both the president and Sardar Abdul Rab Nishtar yielded, and the Charter of Women's Rights was passed unanimously. I left the meeting with tears of joy in my eyes. Mm -hmm. 